Welcome to the Chemistry 209 Masterclass Series. This series of lectures is intended to highlight the key concepts of introductory spectroscopy and structure. This lecture, Masterclass 10, describes the process of Raman scattering and how we can use this phenomenon for spectroscopy. Thus far in Chemistry 209, we have been concerned with the absorption and emission of light by matter. Light can also interact with matter via scattering processes. Elastic or Rayleigh scattering of light leaves matter in its original quantum state. Inelastic or Raman scattering of light results in a change in molecular quantum state during the course of the scattering process. Raman scattering requires that an oscillating molecular dipole is first induced prior to the inelastic scattering event. This is usually accomplished with a strong electric field, such as the one supplied by an intense laser. It is also important that the molecule being interrogated is polarizable. In other words, it is necessary that the electronic distribution about the molecule can be distorted by the applied electric field, and that the molecular polarizability varies as a function of molecular motion, either vibrational or rotational. For example, consider the rotational motion of a homonuclear diatomic molecule. If the molecule is aligned along the applied electric field, its electronic distribution can be polarized to a greater extent than if it were aligned perpendicular to the field. This is referred to as polarizability anisotropy. Thus, as the molecule rotates, the induced dipole moment oscillates sinusoidally at twice the rotational frequency. We can describe the time-dependent oscillation of the laser field in terms of the laser frequency. The molecular polarizability along the field direction can be described in terms of the spherical average of the polarizability and the polarizability anisotropy. Thus, the time-dependent induced dipole moment has frequency components at the same frequency as the incident laser light and at the laser frequency plus or minus the rotational frequency. The first term is associated with Rayleigh scattering. The second two terms are associated with the rotational Raman scattering effect. Note that because the spherical average of the polarizability is in general much larger than the polarizability anisotropy, Rayleigh scattering is the dominant scattering process. Rotational Raman scattering requires that the molecule possess an anisotropic polarizability. We can consider this our gross selection rule for rotational Raman spectroscopy in much the same way that a permanent molecular dipole moment is required for a molecule to be microwave active. We can also specify a delta J equals zero or plus or minus two selection rule for the scattering process. This arises due to the fact that Raman scattering is a two photon process and angular momentum must be conserved. Note that if the molecular state is unchanged by the scattering interaction, the process is Rayleigh scattering. Thus, for the rotational Raman phenomenon, the delta J equals zero process is actually Rayleigh scattering. If delta J is plus two, the molecule gains energy from the scattering interaction and the scattered light is shifted to low frequency compared to the Rayleigh scattered light. These spectral lines are known as rotational Stokes transitions. Alternatively, if the molecule is de-excited by the scattering photon, the molecule loses energy to the photon and the scattered light is shifted to higher frequency of the Rayleigh scattered light. These spectral lines are known as anti-Stokes transitions. Rotational Stokes transitions occur between rotational levels associated with a single vibrational level, usually V equals zero, since low-lying states generally have the highest statistical populations. When the incident photon interacts with the molecule, a short-lived virtual state is formed, which quickly decays back into the separate molecule photon system. If the molecule gains energy in the interaction, the scattered photon is lowered in energy by that amount. These are the Stokes lines. If the molecule loses energy, the scattered photon is raised in energy by that amount. These are the anti-Stokes lines. Since we know that delta J must equal plus or minus two, we can use our expression for rotational energies to produce an expression for rotational Stokes and anti-Stokes transitions. The vibrational Raman effect is analogous to the rotational Raman effect. In this case, the molecular electron distribution is stretched and compressed during vibration, so the component of the molecular polarizability along the electric field can oscillate. Thus, the oscillating induced dipole moment has components at the incident light frequency and at the molecular vibration sum and difference frequencies. Again, because the average molecular polarizability is larger than the polarizability change induced by vibration, the Rayleigh scattering term is dominant. 
For the possible vibrational Stokes transitions, we must consider both the vibrational and rotational energy structure of the molecule. By definition, vibrational Stokes transitions are associated with vibrational excitation of the molecule during the scattering process. This leads to scattered light with a lower frequency than the incident light. Concomitant with the vibrational excitation, we must also consider the delta J equals zero plus or minus two selection rules. Transitions in which J changes by plus two are known as S-type transitions or S-lines. Transitions where J does not change are Q-type transitions or Q-lines, and transitions where J changes by minus two are O-lines. In contrast to vibrational Stokes transitions, vibrational anti-Stokes lines are associated with de-excitation from a high energy vibrational state to a low energy vibrational state. Owing to conservation of energy, the energy lost by the molecule in this process is gained by the scattering photon. Again, we must consider the delta J equals zero plus or minus two selection rules, so S, Q, and O branches are again observed. An overview of the spectrum that we observe via Raman scattering is shown here. To the low frequency side of the Rayleigh line, we see Stokes transitions. Rotational Stokes are immediately adjacent to the Rayleigh line, while vibrational Stokes are shifted to much lower frequency owing to the greater energy contribution provided by the vibrational transition. To the high frequency side of the Rayleigh line, we see anti-Stokes transitions. Immediately adjacent to the Rayleigh line are the rotational anti-Stokes lines, and the vibrational anti-Stokes lines are observed at much higher frequencies. It can be difficult to see whether or not a vibrational mode will have a changing polarizability so as to facilitate Raman activity. We can again turn to our knowledge of symmetry to help in this regard. It turns out that if a normal mode has the same symmetry as one of the quadratic functions given in the molecular symmetry group character table, the fundamental transition involving that mode will be Raman active. For example, the vibrational normal modes of water are of A1 and B1 symmetry, and we see that there are quadratic functions that transform under C2V symmetry for both the A1 and B1 irreducible representations. Thus, the vibrational Raman transitions of water are symmetry allowed. Note that these same modes are IR active. In cases where the molecule has a center of inversion, we can apply the rule of mutual exclusion to predict Raman and IR activity. The rule of mutual exclusion states that for centrosymmetric molecules, a vibrational mode must be either Raman or IR active, not both. So, for species like acetylene, we see that the spatially symmetric normal modes, those with the Gorada labels, are Raman active, while the spatially asymmetric modes, those with the Ungarada labels, are IR active. As a consequence of their anisotropic polarizabilities, all diatomic molecules are rotationally Raman active, but this is not true of all polyatomic molecules. Spherical top species, such as methane, have isotropic charge distributions and therefore zero polarizability anisotropy, so they don't exhibit rotational Raman spectra. Moreover, spherical tops have zero dipole moment and do not exhibit a microwave spectrum. Fortunately, we are able to determine rotational energy level structures and therefore geometries for these species by other means, such as IR spectroscopy, vibrational Raman spectroscopy, and electronic spectroscopy. We will explore electronic spectroscopy in Masterclass 11. See you next time.